In this lesson, we will begin the exploring of other MoGraph generators. So, first guy we'll take a look at is this matrix guy. So, let's uh, create it. And this matrix guy is uh, almost completely identical to the cloner, but uh, it doesn't create clones, it creates matrices. And really, to simplify what the matrix is, is uh, simply a position scaling and rotation information for placing your object. So you can see each of these little guys here, these little boxes, is actually a matrix. So it's basically a placeholder for something else. So if you take a closer look here, you can find all these uh, parameters. So if you change this to, let's say, linear, you can find all the same parameters as for the cloner object. You also have the transform tab, you have the effector, so almost completely the same. The main difference is, is in what this matrix object generates. So it can generate matrices or in a much more complex situation it can generate thinking particles and uh, you will notice that a bunch of things change once you change this generate to thinking particles. So we will stick to this uh, matrices only for now and I want to explain what it can do on simple example. One good way to explain this matrix guy is uh, actually to show you a certain limitation to a cloner. Well in fact it's not a limitation but uh, sometimes it can be an undesired uh, result. In previous lessons we used effectors to deform objects and I will just disable this matrix object for a second and you can see we are left with these three guys which are in fact particles so if we press play we will refresh the scene and they will be gone. Now just as we used effectors to deform objects we can use these deformers here to deform our clone constellations or constellations made by other generators here under this MoGraph menu. So let's create a cloner and uh, we will create an object so I can show you the problem which you will most certainly run into. So let's for example select this uh, to be in a radial mode, 10 clones, uh, maybe 100 centimeters like this. So this will be good enough. And uh, let's also create a material so we can bring some life to this guy. So maybe this uh, orangey color like this and we will apply it to our clone. So now if you want to use the former on a complete clone constellation then uh, first thing you have to do you have to group the cloner. So now any deformer you put below that null object in the group will have an effect in everything that is inside that group. So let's give it a try and maybe select this twist deformer and let's put it here under our null object. So twist deformer and the cloner are on the same hierarchical level. Now you can uh, play with this angle setting here in the twist deformer and uh, I think you are clearly seeing the problem. Look how those clones are distorted. And certainly that can be an uh, effect that you want, but what if you don't want the clones to be distorted? Well, in that case, you should help yourself with this matrix guy. Now let's uh, zero this out. And the uh, first thing you have to do is to match the settings that you have in the cloner object with settings here in the matrix object. So we would uh, set this to radial count of 10 and radius of 100. Now if I enable the matrix object you can see those guys are exactly on the same place as this torus clones. Now I will use this matrix as an object to which I will clone the toruses. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So I will change this mode to object and I will clone them on the matrix object. So we'll drop the matrix object here. Each of these little guys will assume one of the clones so it will give it a position, scaling and rotation value. 
Now, if I will play with my Twist Deformer, you will see that clones still get distorted, but you can actually see that we are deforming the clones with this Twist Deformer. We are not deforming the matrix object, so let's put that to zero and uh, move this Twist guy as a child of the matrix. So now, this is the result that uh, I was after. So, just to clarify, the cloner is creating a clone, but this matrix guy really determines the amount and uh, everything else regarding that clone. And of course, you can mix deformers with effectors. So, let's for example load the uh, maybe formula effector to matrix and uh, I will show you a slight issue that we will probably encounter. So, let's hit play. And uh, this looks really neat. Maybe I will enable the position also. So you have some sort of a crazy behavior. I will get rid of this twist, guys. So some things will be much more clearer. Let me stop this, go back. And this is the issue I was referring to. Things don't really correspond to each other. You can see that these positions of the matrix are not really creating this... Uh, Toruses, as we could expect, and there is actually a priority issue. So if I press play, stop, go back, we will have that once again. I believe many of you that watched volume 3 or project 2 understand that this matrix guy should be executed first. So I will drag it on the top of the object manager because things are evaluated in object manager from top to bottom. So now this cloner and the effector will know where those matrices are. So now, if I press play, stop, go back, I will get rid of the problem. So this is very important. Priorities also play a major role in Mogurf. That being said, I think we can proceed to our next generator, which is this uh, fracture object. and. Uh, I just want to mention that these little guys, these matrices, they don't render. So they are just a visual helper how things will be distributed in the viewport. Now let's get rid of all these guys and uh, I will load a fracture object. And this guy has three most uh, noticeable functions. First one is uh, it views every child as a cloner, so you can apply effectors. Second one is uh, that it can sort of connect and disconnect objects. And the third one is uh, it can be used as an object creation helper. So really to show you how this guy works, I'll first create a cloner. So we have something to compare it to. So let's create a cloner. And uh, for this purpose, I will create a text spline and uh, right here, cloner and uh, just scale this down to 100 so it fits in the viewport nicely. Also, we'll drop this under extrude nerves and uh, let's apply that uh, material and just to bring some life into this uh, text. Now, if I drop this under cloner, you can see that I can actually clone anything that is uh, under the cloner. Set this to just a single clone. And there is a very good reason why I am using text object, which is a generator by itself, under the extrude nerves, which is a generator also. So you will see some sort of uh, limitations, relatively speaking, in terms of cloner. So let's now drop a random effector to our cloner. So we would expect uh, our letters to jump and uh, we'll actually use one of these temporal nodes and press play and everything will look completely fine. But uh, what if you want to constrain this behavior with fall of let's uh, select spherical and uh, you will see nothing happens. It doesn't obey this fall of shape. Why is that? And the answer is simple. It doesn't understand that letters can be separate objects. Cloner considers this complete 
set up as a single guy so it really cannot affect letters separately it doesn't matter if you enable let's say point deformation here because these guys these letters are not made of points these letters are parametric generated objects in cina 4d to surpass this limitation we'll actually get rid of this cloner guy and uh, this deformer to off in the random effector so now what if i drop this guy under my fracture object and uh, let's delete this random effector and we will start over so now we have a extruded text line under the fracture object nothing spectacular will happen in fact nothing will happen in fact nothing will happen at all so to effectively see what these modes do load the effector so let's load the random effector we already loaded the exactly the same one for the cloner so in this case and i will just for the sake of clarification rename this fracture so it's much more easier to understand and uh, distinguish between the two now if we press play and in my random effector i will enable one of these temporal guys so let's say noise and you will see this guy is moving but currently in this mode it simply affects the complete parametric generated spline if you change this to let's say explode segments you will see that these guys will behave differently and in fact the caps and the parts of that spline are exploded so to speak that is why you have this explode segments and connect it will simply connect what is exploded but the letters will be separate now do note that even falloffs work so it's specifically designed for such situations where you have parametric generator under the cloner and by this you can really surpass this limitation so effectively now we have a way to affect only parts of this object i hope this all makes sense now let me get rid of this random effector and uh, if you hit c button or hit this little guy here on your fracture object watch what happens it will create a polygon object for every single of these guys if I undo all this and it will do so according to what is set here so for example if you set this to explode segments and hit C you will get different results meaning that you will also get these caps I hope this uh, explains things around this uh, fracture object and uh, it is really powerful and has many many usages uh, aside to what we shown here what I want to show you also is uh, you can create selections by that i mean mograph selection so you can really interactively select the clone so let me show you that so if i go here under mograph and hit this mograph selection i will get these little guys here and uh, they really correspond to these modes here so if i am in straight mode i will just get this single guy so only the complete guy can be selected if this explode segments is set i can select both the main part of the letter and both caps and in this explode segments and connect i can select just the individual letter so let's maybe select uh, a and uh, by holding shift to select another one maybe E and let's select uh, U also. Now, once the selection is made, you can see it here that you got a new tag on the fracture object. And these selections work on every single guy inside the MoGraph menu. So it works with the cloner and everything else. What is important? Once you, for example, load an effector, let's go with the random effector and we will set here the noise so it works with a 
time and you will see now automatically if you have the generator selected then it will drop the selection inside the selection slot now this is the result where you manually maybe created the selection and if the effector didn't receive that selection tag you simply drag it here and constrain the effect only to this letter so another really powerful way to affect your clone constellations it is really flexible it is really powerful and uh, everything works in conjunction and uh, that's about it for uh, matrix and fracture we will now take a look at uh, inheritance and volume effector in our next lesson